it's a nice wee change for you, isn't it? <laughs> to, Aye. to the usual pubs. Yeah, I need to open the door for you here. There we go. It's really quite uncomfortable vlogging. Okay. Having a wee glass of Blanc de Blanc. You're having a whole day. Do we have a choice of the a la carte or the tasting menu? So then the two here are both of our cheddars. Do we have a little bit? It's just basically hot water, isn't yeah. it? Just that little bit, honey. Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Andre and welcome to our kitchen. But it's going to be slightly different this evening. We are not cooking in the kitchen. We are not eating in the kitchen. And we are not reviewing in the kitchen. But before we get on to what we are doing, I invite you to subscribe and whilst you're subscribing just press the bell for the notification so you don't miss any videos from moi and from my husband Regal. So tonight we are going to go and enjoy some fine dining. We are going to cross baskets castle but I am going to now turn the camera on to Rico and he can tell you all about well, it. hello again. As Andrew said we're going to cross baskets castle. The restaurant is run by Albert and Michelle Rue Jr. They have several of these restaurants in various upmarket hotels throughout Scotland and we've been there before. It's not Michelin starred but it's a fine dining restaurant and the plan tonight is that we're going to have the tasting menu with the tasting wines. We all, always find that a good idea when we go to that type of establishment and we're going to try and review each wine as we taste it. We have been there before and the restaurant is rather small so it would be a wee bit encroaching on other people's privacy if we tried to film or anything like that in the restaurant. So we'll see how it goes and we'll catch up later. We change for you, isn't it? <laughs> to, the, to the usual pubs. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Need even open the door for you here. There, there we go. Have a lovely night. Here we are. We have arrived. It is a very grand. Like I said, we have been before, so it's really rather beautiful. And the drive-in is really quite nice as well. And the trees are all lit up. And yeah, if I remember correctly, this is the view we'll have from the uh, dining table. So uh, yeah, and as you can see just in there, there's the dining area just there. So really rather grand. So we have arrived and we are just in the bar area. <laughs> it's really quite uncomfortable vlogging. Um, so uh, yeah, we're just waiting to order some drinks before dining. So our table was booked for seven o'clock and we were shown straight into the bar area. So obviously we are not being shown to the table straight away. So those times are accommodated for yeah. for having a drink in the bar. It does say on the website that if you book your table for seven o'clock you expect to sit to dine at half past seven. So that's the that's the way it works. Okay, so here we have our canopies to start. Still waiting on our drinks to arrive. What do we have, Rico? We've got curried macaroons. Unusual. Yes, and we have textures of beetroot. Mm -hmm. And what was this one? I can't remember. <laughs> so soon. <laughs> <laughs> so it was chicken liver patty on a toasted brioche with sliced grape. Okay, and what are you of, having to drink? I'm having a wee glass of Blanc de Blanc, which is nice champagne, 100% Chardonnay, no red grapes, which normally is part of the mixture of, of champagne. And I'm looking forward to a wee canopy in this. What champagne. am I having? You're having a rosé. The champagnes are both uh, house champagnes and Albert Rue labels of champagne, so 
There are obviously champagnes made for Albert Roo and we use them in all the restaurants. Okay. Or labelled for Albert Roo. So here we have the menu. So we have a choice of the a la carte or the tasting menu. Okay, we have ordered and we have decided to go for the tasting menu. So what have we got here, Rico? It's an Amber's Bush, a little taster. comfort of our own sitting room now the footage that you will have just seen was in the actual dining area so the fireplace the beautiful painting that was all in the dining room and we were in fact sitting right next to the fireplace and it was absolutely beautiful so Rico what did we have to eat well when we first got into the dining room of course we, we were shown to that lovely table and uh, the first thing that happened was they brought us up a tray with breads and we could choose if we wanted some bread to, to have, which we did. And, and the breads were lovely as the well. Breads were, breads, they, there was they, like they, a variety yes, of breads. Yes, that's right. And then they brought us a wee pre-first course, which was an amuse bush, just a wee taster of, to tantalise your taste buds of what's to come. And the, the amuse bush that they brought us was pea puree with bacon basically and it was just a small pea puree like in an espresso cup and it was topped with sort of crumbed bacon a small slither of bacon which was quite crunchy crispy bacon. and nice yes yes, yep, yes. Really and, and it was lovely it was lovely it did tantalize your taste buds it made you excited for what you were going to have next well, that's and the, that, that is the idea yeah. of the Amos bush it just tantalizes and yeah. we're ready to go and what's going to happen next sort of thing. I would also say while we were sitting there, the ambience is, is really beautiful because they've got a harpist who sits out in the hallway just immediately outside the dining room and she plays all evening while you're dining yeah, and, you can, and, and it's beautiful. You, you can, can just hear, hear yeah, yeah, you can hear her throughout yep. wherever you're sitting. So you yep. enter, you see the harpist and then when you go into maybe the lounge area you can still hear the harpist when we were in the bar area we could still hear the harpist you you'll, yeah. you you will have heard her in the background <laughs> Cheers, honey. Let's try this. So, our first course has arrived, as you can see, and it was a West Coast crab, pickled kohlrabi, celery, apple, and a fennel broth, and it was absolutely delightful. And it was paired with a cave de l'Orman pig pool de pine which was a white wine, a long wedot from the south of France, 13% by volume, very clean, fresh wine, and it went beautifully with, with, with that first course. The, the first course was absolutely delicious. delicious it really yeah. was. You couldn't really fault the food, could you? No. Any no. of the courses, they were no. absolutely delicious. Splendid it was. Okay, on to the next one. Mm. Second course, we're having a... A South African blend, 55% Chenin Blanc, and then it's got Viogne, Chardonnay, Roussan, I think there's one more grape which I can't remember. But anyway, an interesting combination, may I say. So I've put my spoon in it because I was quite excited to taste. I've started tasting already. I just can't help it, you know. It's mushroom soup with potato. <laughs> okay, our second course came along and it was described as Jersey Royal, Wild Mushroom Veloute and Tarragon. 
and it was basically what it basically is is a potato and mushroom soup that's how i would best describe it um veluti being a thick a thick soup and it was a vondling bambiana wine that came with it which is a south african wine quite a rare blend of four grapes i mentioned there at the beginning that the fourth grape was roussan it was actually grenache blanc but the the, the ratios were right and the, and the wine was quite yellow in color sort of straw like color and it was quite smoky and a wee bit oak in it and it went well with the soup because it handled all those strong flavors of the wild mushroom and the tarragon. On to the next course. So this is what? The third wine? Third. That's a shabbly. That must be a new jet flower or something, no? Yeah. We're on to the third course and I was quite excited about this course because halibut is one of my favourites but it was described as pan-seared halibut, purple majesty, chorizo, parsley and razor clams. What's purple majesty? It's a, a type of potato I think. Oh right, okay. Right? Um, and it was paired with chablis and Chablis is my favourite white wine. Because it's a it's, Chardonnay. It's 100% Chardonnay, it's a white Burgundy and what else can I say about it? Anyway, it was a delightful course. The halibut was delicious. Everything that went with it was cooked beautifully and it was just a, just enough. And the Chablis, what, I can't see any more than but that. But which one was it you said I could just dip my bread in this? What was it you were just like, we just really need to dip our bread in this? Was that not in the mushrooms? In the mushrooms? I can't soup? remember, but that was... I think it was in the mushrooms. Yeah, that, that is, it's it's such a Greek separate thing to do, you know, dip your bread and, you know, just kind of clean your plate with yeah. your bread, well, isn't it? it? Yeah, but you absolutely. didn't do it, did you? Well, I did, but you didn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. Okay, on to the next one. <laughs> Mendoza Malbec. It does smell lovely. Seriously. <laughs> On to course number four, which is the main course, and it was venison loin, Jerusalem artichoke. Pom Anna and Confit Charlot and this was paired with uh, Malbec Argentinian Cake in Ultra was the name of the wine Malbec which was a beautiful wine paired with the, the, the venison beautifully it was very very smooth full of flavour and the venison was lovely as well lovely dish with weaver artichoke on it the Pom Anna which is just very thinly sliced potato in a mould and lots of butter baked till it uh, becomes that sort of cakey way and my venison was medium rare Andy doesn't like hers that way and there was not a problem in them cooking it on a little bit to, to medium That's it, on to the next one! <laughs> Well, I've got our blue cheese here. So then the two here are both of our cheddars. So we have a little bit of a stronger cheddar and a little bit of a weaker one. This one here is the one that's washed down in Glen Tilloch single malt whiskey. So it gives it a little bit more of a bitter taste to it. Over here we have got our goat's cheese. So this is a very fresh taste of goat's cheese, very citrusy taste to it. And over here we have Winslade. So Winslade is just the one there. It's actually wrapped in pine. 
So it gives it a little bit of an earthy taste. Um, it's quite a soft and strong cheese. And then we've got our chutney grapes, we've got a fig and damsel. <coughs> okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Course number five was of course dessert. Final course. Uh, but they give you a choice here. You could either have cheese and biscuits or the dessert. Andrew chose the cheese, and you see, you'll see from the video here. She had a lovely selection of cheese that was carved on the board at the table, and uh, along with that, she had um, Madeira wine, which of course is from Portugal. And uh, did it go? Did it go well? We would normally have port. It did, but you did comment that yeah. it was. You found it very strange that they served Madeira yes. wine because Madeira wine is normally used for cooking. Correct. And the the waiter said that. Uh, Madeira is going to be the next big thing in wine. Anyway, I had the dessert and it was an apple crumble souffle with custard ice cream and it was yummy. And he dug into it pretty quick. I did, I did. I just put the spoon in and the ice cream went down into the souffle and I started eating it and there was lovely crunchy bits in the souffle and everything. I wouldn't it, know. It, it was absolutely delicious and with that they served a Sauternes, which is a, another French wine from the Bordeaux region. Sweet wine. I don't normally do dessert wines, only when we do fine dining and we do a tasting menu. And it was it was rather nice as Sauternes. Did it go with it? Of course it did. What I will say here is, do you remember they assumed you were having the cheese when the staff came to put down the cutlery? They naturally assumed you were going to have the cheese and I was going to have yeah. the dessert. So. Yeah. My motto in life is never assume anything. Never assume. <laughs> on to the next one. Did we have a next one? We have a coffee in the drawing room. So we did. In, into the um, Stuart room. For uh, and it was really quite good. So we're gonna I'm going to insert that footage in next of us in the actual what was it what did you say the Stuart room? Yeah. That's, that's, but that's you have a choice yeah. of different rooms, right? I'm gonna insert that footage in just now and then we'll talk about it and come to a conclusion of our whole, whole experience yes yeah so we have finished dining so we've now come through to this beautiful room for coffee and maybe a wee liqueur we call uh, absolutely so it's absolutely stunning so they've lit the fire for us so the fire has been lit the harpist is still playing. So here is the room, it's absolutely beautiful. This is my ideal type of decor. Look. Now some coffee and a liqueur oh, on the way. Wait, just wait for drinks. Right? <laughs> so it's just basically hot water, isn't yep. it? And a nice little cheeky zambuca. Just there, honey. So that was our dining experience at Cross Baskets Castle and it was really an enjoyable night. Food was delicious, the wine was good and um, we have done fine dining quite a few times. I would say that you could definitely see the difference between a Michelin starred and a non-Michelin starred. We've done both. Um, for example, um, what, what do you think, like, is there a big difference in pricing of a Michelin and a non-Michelin? Well, Michelin stars restaurants are generally a wee bit more expensive than what we had the other night. Yeah, well, but we would expect them to be a wee bit more, but I yes. mean, is, there a, is there a big difference? Well, if you go to three Michelin stars, like, we went to go to Ramsey's in uh, Royal Hospital Road in Chelsea, and it was three Michelin stars, and it's... 
like three or four times what we paid the other night. Right, okay. So But the experience was a far, yes, yes, far, yes, far, far, yes, far yes, superior. Yes, the the way the staff work, everything, the 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 manager of the place who's been with Gordon Ramsay for years. That's right. Um it's just you know when you go into, I know a lot of people when they go into the, these but, establishments, these kind of fine dining places, sometimes if you're not used to that environment, you feel quite uncomfortable and you shouldn't be made to feel that way. If you if you feel uncomfortable, then the staff are not doing their job properly yeah, yeah. as but, far as I'm but, concerned. But the staff did their job very well the other night. They all did their job very well, but let's, let, let's just look at a wee, just at something here. The rest of the other night, had maybe 30 covers. Ramsey's has maybe up to 50 covers. Okay, that's what they can see. Mm -hmm. I say covers up the amount of seats. So, with the, uh, that restaurant that we went to the other night, at the Cross Baskets Castle, maybe had a team of about five or six out on the floor. When we went to, to, to Ramsey's, how many were on the floor? From the man, the maitre d', the sommelier, wine waiters, other everybody, waiters. Everybody has a specific, specific job. job. Like the person, you know, what we noticed was, you know, somebody would come and move what we had finished with to the edge of the table, but wouldn't take it away. It was somebody else's job to lift that and take it away. Everybody had their own specific job. Somebody would bring the food in a tray. Somebody else would take it off the tray and place it on the table in Gordon Ramsay's so Yep. I don't think you could really compare the two no, places, no, they're not comparable even, at all. When you look at Cross Baskets Castle, we're not criticising the place in any way, because it was, it was a lovely night and, and the staff were all lovely, but the, when you do fine dining, these are the wee things that make a difference, that take a, a place up on another level. When the staff carried their food the other night, they carried them like we a waiter would carry them two plates in one hand and then put them down. That shouldn't happen in fine dining. Things should come out in trays and then somebody should, either they should use a wee table to put the tray on and serve the meal or somebody else should lift it off the tray like happens in, in, in fine dining. We, you expect these yes, extra things when you're right. fine So that's dining. maybe what takes places up to Michelin, getting Michelin starred. Well, the food was very good. You couldn't fault the food. Everything we had was lovely, but it just wasn't at that level yet. Yeah. Yep. But what I would say, we'd, we'd, we've dined at Cross Baskets before and I think the experience we had the other night was better than our first experience. Although we enjoyed our first experience, but, but something that, that I didn't enjoy in our first experience was, we in our first experience we did the same idea. We had the, the menu with the matching wines and the waiter would come up to the table with a bottle of wine give us a spill in the wine, tell us about it, walk away and then come back with two small, small glasses of that wine. When I say small glass, it might have been a big glass with a small amount of wine in it. But it was obviously measured out. But this time, they were professional enough to come up with a bottle of wine which was opened and they were serving to different tables and he would pour the wine. At which the was, table. Which, which, which is more professional. Yep, definitely. Okay, so overall we enjoyed it, yep. so we, we really do enjoy fine dining, it's just something special. Yeah, and with, with, it was nice when you, you got up off your table, like there, they, you don't, they don't serve coffee at the table and we yeah. got up and we went to the, the street. The lounge room, area was called beautiful, it. you would have seen that, it was absolutely well, beautiful. Last time we were there, we went back into the bar area yeah, to have the, our coffee. It wasn't the bar area, no, it was a different lounge area right. again, it was but again a the, different... The room we went to this time is, was the drawing room, mm -hmm. That's, it's called the steward room, but it's the drawing room. We were the only ones they took there and it was very nice and we were ourselves and beautiful big fireplace again yeah and you would have seen that in the footage yep. anyway i hope you have enjoyed sharing our experience of fine dining at cross baskets castle we certainly enjoyed it and we look forward to doing it again and um, it's almost like a hobby for us yep. fine dining we really do enjoy it and um yeah so on that note cheers cheers and we'll catch you next time Bye. Bye. Oh, if you'd like to see more video from us, I will link one here, here, and the A right here. <laughs> <laughs> Catch you next time.
kind of help myself, huh? <laughs> Whoops, stupid. <laughs>